Credit default swap simplified or how I learned to love the financial meltdown by Mike Russo of Creative Arts and Services. So what is a credit default swap? Well, here's a formal definition. It's a type of insurance contract between two parties that are called counterparties. And it ensures the risk against a third party or an entity called a reference entity. Now that sounds pretty abstract and we're going to define a reference entity. So a reference entity is any type of financial instrument such as pooled mortgages, bonds, collateralized debt obligations, and even if a bet with a bookie or a sports betting pool. Now that even this I know sounds abstract but what we're going to do is we're going to present this in two parts. And the first part is an analogy, and the second part will actually be a, a presentation of an actual credit default swap. So here is the analogy. We have a lender, we have an insurer, and we have a homeowner. Now the homeowner wants to take out a loan with the lender. So the lender it says, I give you a subprime variable rate mortgage. And he knows that the homeowner doesn't have to provide any qualifications for the loan. In other words, he can just say, hey, I make $100,000 a year without any proof of that because it is a subprime loan. And also the lender knows that somewhere along the line, the interest rate is going to go up on that. So he's concerned that the homeowner might default on the loan. So what he does is he goes to an insurer and he takes out a, an insurance that will cover the risk of losing that house, of it going, if it being defaulted. So the premium is based on some percentage value of the property. And the insurer gives him a contract that's usually good for about five years. So everything is fine, but then the, the interest rate goes up on the subprime mortgage. So now the homeowner can't make the payments, so he defaults on the loan. And the homeowner walks away from the house. So the insurer gets the house and the remaining assets and from that he is going to pay the lender the remaining balance on the house to make the lender whole. Well that's a simple analogy of what a credit default swap is. But now let's look at a real one. A real credit default swap. We have a bank. We have a corporation with a BB credit rating. And BB credit rating is not really a good credit rating. It, a good credit rating would be a triple A rating, but uh, BB has uh, some marginality to it. So the bank is going to go to an insurer like AIG. And the corporation says to the bank, we want to borrow $1 billion. The bank says, well, we'd like to lend you the money, but you've got this BB credit rating. So they tell the, the corporation, okay, we'll lend you the billion dollars, but because of your credit rating, we'll take out a credit default swap with AIG. And AIG says, okay, bank, here are the terms of the credit default swap. You give us 1% per year of the loan value as a premium payable in five years, and we'll cover your risk with the corporation. And the bank says, okay, AIG, I'll pay you a premium of 1% per year of the loan value for five years. And AIG says, okay, we agree to make the bank whole if the corporation defaults on the loan. So the bank pays AIG the 1% per year. And the bank gives the loan to the corporation for $1 billion. 
and the corporation pays the 10% per year payable in 10 years to pay off the loan. And the premium of 1% per year for the loan for five years is paid to the bank to AIG. Now, everybody is happy, but what happens if the corporation defaults on the loan? Well, AIG is then going to have to pay the balance on the loan back to the bank. Now here's the situation with companies like AIG that have these credit default swaps. The entire market is totally deregulated and they don't have to have any collateral to back up the loans. That's these entities that act as credit default swaps and insurers, they don't have to have the collateral to back up the loans. So if you take what we have just gone through and multiply that times thousands, you have thousands of these transactions that are made daily. They're worldwide. They are connected throughout the world. So the entire credit default swap market worldwide is a $62 trillion market, totally deregulated, trading worldwide and over the counter. So when one of these entities goes bankrupt, it has a ripple effect throughout the world and these start leaving this interconnection. It's like a ticking time bomb about ready to go off. And there it is. It goes off and that's part of what created the financial meltdown. So it's not that any bank is too big to fail is what we hear. It's that they are all connected worldwide through this credit default swap network. And when one fails, it starts a chain reaction because they are so interdependent upon each other. And that's how the credit default swap market helped to create the financial meltdown. I hope that this has given you some idea as to how a credit default swap works. It's somewhat simplified and there are very sophisticated transactions and interactions that take place. But this is the basis. This is the fundamentals of it and uh, I, I hope that it has helped you understand it. My name is Mike Russo, and uh, I'm from Created Arts and Services. Thank you for watching this.